Hi, I'm Winnie. I'm the founder of VintageHeirloom.com and today we're going to be looking at authenticating Louis Vuitton monogram classic styles. Louis Vuitton is a French luxury goods company that was founded in 1854 and it started making packing trunks for the wealthy during the time when steam train travel was fashionable. The company still continues today and their classic monogram styles are still very much in demand. As Louis Vuitton has so many styles and variations, today we're just going to look at the classic monogram Speedy Bags. The Speedy Bag has been around since the 1960s and it was seen on celebrities of their day such as Audrey Hepburn. The bag design has remained relatively unchanged. An important feature of the Speedy Bag is the iconic monogram patterning. The monogram patterning has been around since the early 20th century and ironically it was designed to combat counterfeiting. The monogram patterning was updated in 1959 and since then the design has remained unchanged. The Speedy comes in five different sizes, Speedy 25, 30, 35, 40 and 45. They are so called because of their size. So a speedy 25, which I have here, it's because it's 25 centimetres in width. Unfortunately, the speedy monogram is one of the most counterfeited bags. So today we're going to discuss and give a brief overview of the differences between a replica and an authentic LV bag. So step one, we're going to look at the monogram. Here I have a speedy 25 and a speedy 35. 25 and a 35. Now the monogram patterning should have irregular properties and the patterning should start asymmetrically. The LV, the L should sit at the bottom with the V slightly above the L followed by a fleur-de-lis style flower, a circle, fleur-de-lis and LV again and a pattern should repeat. And going across the fleur-de-lis, it should be an inverse, circle, inverse, circle, and etc. The bag patterning should also be symmetrical. So, if one corner of the bag should start out with, let's say, half an inverse fleur-de-lis, if we follow the pattern all the way down, it should end up with half a fleur-de-lis and this formula should repeat at any point in the bag so if we pick from here half a circle we should follow the pattern down and it should end up a half a circle the rule should always apply going across too so if it starts half a circle here, it should be half a circle on the opposite side. It should be a mirror image. So if we look at again here, there's an inverse fleur-de-lis. We go across, it should finish an inverse fleur-de-lis. And the same again at the top of the bag. It should be a mirror image. So there's two flowers, two circles, to LVs and so forth and so on. For step two we're going to look at the LV monogram patterning. Now on all authentic speedies there will be an upside down LV on the opposite side of the bag. This is because Louis Vuitton uses one continuous piece of leather wrapping the bag back to front. So you can see it's upright here. If we follow the pattern all the way through and flip it over, the LV is upside down. Also, because it's a one continuous piece, there will never be a bottom bag seam. And now step three, we're going to look at stitching and the handles. Louis Vuitton are very meticulous about stitching. So on the, on the handles, there will always be five stitches going across. One, two, three, four, five. 
Authentic LV bags should always have a mustard yellow coloured stitching, whereas on replica bags there are often a bright yellow stitching. Now we're going to look at the handles. On authentic LV bags, the handles start out as a very pale beige leather and over time with use, the colour should darken like this. This is because Louis Vuitton uses an oxidising cowhide leather that turns darker over time. Another feature of the handles is the contrasting red trim. On authentic Louis Vuitton bags, they start out as a very burgundy red and over time this darkens like so. You can just about see a bit of red coming through. On replica bags the trim is often a bright lipstick red and this never fades. Step 4. Now we're going to look at hardware. On authentic LV bags the hardware is always brass plated. On my vintage sample here, as you can see, the brass has turned bronze over time and you can tell this is authentic brassware because on the vintage styles there is kind of like a greenish hue around the rivets. This is because real brass oxidises with the air over time. On replica versions the hardware is just a metal base coloured in gold and the gold is often a bright yellow gold. Step 5, now we're going to look at the lining. Authentic speedy bag should always have a brown canvas lining, like so. Step 6, now we're going to look at date coding. Replica bags are now getting pretty good at the date stamping. However, the letters and numbers do mean something and I think sometimes replica companies just put on any old numbers and letters. So we're going to look at how to decipher what the numbers and letters mean. To find the date coding in a speedy, always check behind the pocket. So you lift up the pocket, and it's always on the back side of the handle. The indentation of the stamping should always be even, with the letters and numbers evenly spaced. I've noticed on replica versions sometimes the indentation is deeper than the other side and the spacing is a lot closer. So what do the numbers mean? Pre-1980s Louis Vuitton did not have an organised dating system. Most of the bags before this time simply had no date stamp code. The date stamping code was introduced in the 1980s onwards using a combination of letters and numbers. The earliest example of date stamping was a three digit system. Now I have here an early 80s cutch. I know it's not a speedy but I want to show you the early dating system. We have here three digits that says 841. The first two digits actually represent the year so 8 and 4, that would be 84, 1984. And the last digit, 1, would be the month, which would mean it's January. So this bag dates back from January 1984. Towards the 1990s, the dating system has changed, now using a mixture of letters and numbers. Not only is the month and year is represented, but also the country of origin. Did you know that Louis Vuitton bags are not only produced in France, but also USA, Spain, Italy and Germany? You may wonder why. This is because by the 70s and 80s, Louis Vuitton could not meet up with demand and had to outsource their bags to other countries. So let's look at my vintage speedies and we can look at the date coding on these bags. First of all, we'll start with the Speedy 25. Here we have a date coding that has SP0967. I know that SP represents France. Now the four digits you can see here, the first and third digit represent the month and the third and fourth digit represent the year. So for the month 06 that would mean it's June 
and 9 and 7 mean it's 97. So this bag tells me it was made in France in June 1997. And let's look at my Speedy 35 here. Lift up the bag. Then on here it says SP1924. So SP, once again, it means it's made in France. So 1 and 2, that means it must be the month of December, 12. And the year is 9 and 4, 94. So this bag tells me it was made in France, December, 1994. The list of country codes and further dating information will be available on my website, vintageheirloom.com. And finally, to conclude, I would say use your common sense. Louis Vuitton bags never ever go on sale and nor do they have sample sales or sell second of 40 stock. Don't believe websites that say they do. Louis Vuitton is a luxury bag company. Prices start for speedies from £450 to an excess of £1,000. So websites that are claiming to sell brand new stock for less than 150 US dollars, I would be very weary of. However, if you do buy a replica bag, you get what you pay for. The quality will not be the same as an authentic bag. It will not last as long. If you do choose to buy a vintage Louis Vuitton bag, check the seller's feedback and status. Ask if they have a refund or returns policy and always ask plenty of questions. My name is Winnie and thank you for watching this video. These, along with other vintage Louis Vuitton styles, are available to purchase on my website vintageheirloom.com. I hope to see you again soon.